you want to be officially official, watch this video because I got your back. Now I have to give a little disclaimer because I didn't go to law school and I'm not a lawyer, so I can't give you legal advice. I can tell you what permits, insurance, and things that I have in place for my six-figure catering company that I started scaling back in 2017, 18. And yeah, now I'm spilling all the tea. I have a company called The Grays Academy. I do coaching. I have an online course that's called Board to Business Blueprint. And that's really basically the best thing to get you started if you're interested in this. But today, I'm just going to fill you in, in a little bit of the legal jargon, the things you kind of need um, to get started. Once you've made the decision that this is something that you want to do, I recommend getting your DBA. And now this is a doing business as. So you're official, you're going to want a name for your business, you're going to collect money, so get a DBA. Mine is all of the nectar. After that, you're probably going to want to look at getting an entity. Some people do an LLC while others do a sole proprietor. Do a little research on which one. There's like three or four different types of entities, I believe. Um, do whatever one you think is best for you. Be sure you check the price on these entities so you know what you're paying annually. Now, your district might have different names for these, but they have a lot in common, such as your health permit, your business license, seller's permit, and insurance. These four things are pretty important things that you need to have in place when having your business up and officially running. Sometimes you can't get one of these permits or licenses without the other. And I couldn't get the health permit without the kitchen signage. So depending on where you are, you can kind of figure that out as you go. It can seem overwhelming to get insurance and a health permit and a seller's permit and a DBA and an LLC. All of that seems overwhelming. But once you take it day by day, permit by permit, licenses by licenses, it's not that hard. And it is the hardest part of this business. At the end of the day, this business is one of the easiest, most profitable, most creative thing you can embark on. So I highly recommend it. You can do hard things. The commercial kitchen is super important. I will say some people do not need a commercial kitchen. Some people can do it out of their friend's coffee shop or bakery. Some people can do it out of their own home kitchen under a cottage food license or some other license that they have um, that maybe you or I don't have out here. So the order of pursuing these is really different for everybody. But what I did was I first got my DBA. I switched from an LLC to a sole proprietor. After that, I got my business license. After my business license, I went to the health department, got a little piece of paper, an application. I needed a commercial kitchen to sign off on it. So I had to go find a commercial kitchen. They signed off on that. And then prior to all of this, I already had my um, Serve Safe certificate from serving, but I wanted to learn more and I wanted to be more credible. Now, I think nowadays when you join a commercial kitchen, they might require you to have the Serve Safe certificate, but not all kitchens probably do that. I don't know where they are now. I just know I got the manager version because I wanted to be sure that I'm preparing all my food the right way, not cross-contaminating if I can avoid it. Just things that I would feel well-equipped and well-educated, and it's just a really nice thing to have in your toolbox. A contract is something else you want to have in place. There are some really important things that can cover you and save your business, but your business is nothing without insurance. Like you need insurance to back up that contract just as much as you need a contract to back up your insurance. So definitely look at getting commercial general liability insurance. That is super important. Now I've shared this information with clients of mine over coaching calls and in my private Facebook group. And there's always more questions that come up. You could watch this video. You could go get the commercial kitchen. You could get the DBA and all the permits and insurance, but you still are going to be left with some burning questions. Some of them are like, how do I know how much food to buy? Because you could go to the grocery store and be like, okay, I just booked a gig for 150 people. I'm so excited. I got the insurance. I got it all set up with the contract. I'm going to a venue. And then you're like, wait, 150 people. How do I buy for that? You don't want to make the mistake of overbuying because not only will that create debt right off the start in your business, 
But in that one experience of buying too much food and going into debt, you didn't really learn anything. The next time, maybe you're going to buy a little less. But then how do you know that's not going to underfeed your client? And let's talk about underfeeding. So if you are underbuying and you show up to a grazing table that you're going to set up and there's not enough food, that client is most likely not going to hire you again or worse, leave you a negative review. Say bye-bye to your business. You're probably also having questions about, oh, I have an event. What would I do if it's an hour away? How do I store my food properly? Some people think, okay, yeah, just like an icebox, right? There's so much more to it. There's not just an icebox. You don't want to freeze your food. They're not asking for a carrot popsicle table. They're asking for a charcuterie grazing table. And if your cheese is frozen and there's icicles on your carrot sticks, that's not going to work. The idea with every single grazing table that you book is that you get new eyes on your table and each person either loves it, they want to hire you, or they tell a friend about you. Now, the conversion rates of that of every single person seeing your table is like not very likely. However, it is a domino effect. One table, you just need one client and then you just keep this domino effect. Money, 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 money. That's really how you scale your business is just grazing table after grazing table because these new people see it and they want it. What if you show up to a grazing table and nowhere on the table does it say all of the nectar? The client said they do not want business cards and you're just like, oh, how am I going to convert new clients from this grazing table if they don't know this is made from all of the nectar? Are they really going to remember to go up and ask the bride and say, hey, who did that catering? I've got the tools for that. I've got the tools for our food formula, and I've got all the things you need to know about prepping, marketing, and getting this business started from scratch. We're to start this business off of just watching my YouTube videos and Googling and posting the photos and all of that. I will cut your time, your mistakes, and all the lessons that you could potentially learn by just doing this on your own. I can cut it in half. There's so much to this business. It is very profitable. There is not much overhead that goes into it. And it's easy once you get it up and running. But you need the support, the accountability. You need the inspiration. You need that person there to hold your hand and guide you along the way. And I am that person, gratefully so. And Board to Business Blueprint is the course for you. Even if you have your business up and running and it's flourishing, but you've just been doing grazing boxes and you feel like you're not making a profit, Board to Business Blueprint is also for you. Now, I've never done this on one of my YouTube videos, but I have a special code only for YouTube subscribers. This is not going out on Instagram. This is not going out on my newsletter. This is just for you guys here on YouTube. And the code is YouTube and I'm giving you guys for BBB today. $97. It's a limited time offer. So hopefully you watch this video. Go plug that code in. If it's still there, great. If not, it's expired. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I just want this to be the thing that makes you take the leap into investing in yourself and in this business and join all the hundreds of people that are making thousands and thousands of dollars a year and thousands of dollars a month from just doing this course. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week.